John chapter 4. Jesus said that he must needs go through Samaria. That's verse 4. Then he goes down to Jacob's well, and there comes a woman from Samaria to draw water. He begins a conversation with her, and the first thing he says is, Give me to drink. He makes the first move. How many of you believe that Jesus still makes the first move? Amen. It takes him to draw us to God for us to even get right with God. And now the conversation's going on, but I want to break into this. And uh, Jesus is speaking to her in verse 13. And he answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never, never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water spring, springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto her, unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And I'm going to stop there. I may read some more later on. But I want to preach on the thirst quencer. The thirst quencer. Amen. We're living in a world where everyone is searching for some kind of a satisfaction or a fulfillment. They have a desire. They have a longing. And the majority of this world is filling it with things or with experiences or with objects, side effects of anything they can gather in to try to fill that need or that desire or that longing in their life. You don't have to go far to find them. You can look just across the street, possibly from where you live or right next door to where you live. You don't have to go far. You might even have it under the same roof where you're living, a family member that's looking for satisfaction and they're searching with everything the world has to offer, trying from one thing to another to fulfill that desire. And I know that I'm preaching right because I used to be one of those searching people, longing people, thirsting people. I know I tried everything the devil would bring to my mind. I indulged in it and some things more, some things more than others looking for satisfaction. You say, well, now that we're saved, Sister Linda, we shouldn't have problems with that. I agree, but we've got people sitting on Pentecostal churches' pews that are still not satisfied. They're still looking. They're still searching. They're still longing. There's people that's claiming to be saved today that's so miserable you wouldn't even know them from that sinner that's out there searching for another drink from the bottle, amen, or that drug addict that's still looking for another pill to pop or another vein to shoot up. You wouldn't know that so-called Christian from that lady that's going from man to man looking for someone to fulfill their desires or woman going, or man, either one going from place to place looking for it. I say it should not be in the church today if we believe what we preach if we believe the whole word of God if we believe that God has spoken you and I the truth we shouldn't have that in the church today we should rise up and say hey I know where to get my satisfaction I know where to find my fulfillment I'm not looking for it I'm not searching for it and I'm not trying everything the devil passes off to me to try to fulfill my life because I know who satisfies my soul. I know who gives me everything that I need. If I'll just keep going back to that same source, I can maintain a satisfied life. I know we've heard that old song possibly sung for years. I'm satisfied with my Lord, but is He satisfied with me? Any of you old enough to remember that old one? Amen. And I believe people back then when they sang it, they were satisfied. But you see, we've come to an hour where things are creeping into our lives uh, and where conveniences and, and luxuries and pleasure trips and anything can be substituted for what we used to indulge in. We substitute these other things amen years ago to socialize church was about the main socializing place you went amen uh, some of you remember the only date you ever had with your husband and wife was going to church 
I heard a few amens there. Amen. Uh, so uh, we've substituted that now. We've got automobiles that'll take us, uh, or we'll drive two and three hours just to get to a certain steakhouse. Hello. Grin at me if you're not guilty. <laughs> I'm grinning at you, okay, because I've driven with them, I've ridden with them, and gone the distance to eat. But we substitute so many things for the things of God, and it has brought dissatisfaction within our souls and our heart. Oh, dear God, we got a preacher preaching against eating steaks. Some of you done marked me off your list already. I'm not preaching against eating steaks. I'm just making a point tonight that we are going to have to find where the real satisfaction and the real source of quenching that longing in our hearts we're going to have to find that and we're going to have to drive us up a stake and say this is where I'm staying I'm not allowing anything in this world to lure me away from it nor entice me away from it or cause me to look away from it I'm going to stay right here by the well amen I'm going to stay right here by the thirst quencher because I'm going to get thirsty again after a while for another drink of this one sip won't do one drink won't do amen the drink that we drink from this satisfying source will satisfy in that we search no other place uh, but one drink won't keep you for all eternity you've got to keep drinking from the well if you're going to stay alive like I said a while ago I'm free but I'm praying dear God keep me free I'm saved, saved but I'm praying dear God keep me saved amen I've been cut loose from my sins but I'm praying dear God help me not to sin anymore amen I've been loose from the bondage of hell but I'm praying dear God don't let me trip and fall into one of Satan's pitfalls and lose out with you and end up in hell anyway amen it's not who starts out in the race that wins the prize but it's that man and that woman and that boy and that girl that endures to the end he said the same shall be saved and listen up it's what you had to get to get saved that you've got to have to stay saved amen what you had to do to get right with God is what you and I have got to do to stay right with God what we had to lay down what we had to pick up what we had to give up what we had to take on what we had to empty out what we had to put in we've got to keep doing it day in and day out it's not a once in a lifetime thing but it is a lifetime experience if you live it one day at a time I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. I want to have that thirst quenching power residing in my soul that when the devil comes along with his uh, garbage peddling his wares, uh, I can look him in the eye and say, I found what I was looking for. You better find somebody else uh, to try to pawn it off on. I have no desire for it anymore. I lost that desire when I drank from the well. Somebody praise you. Oh, help me preach, Holy Ghost. Help me preach. See, he found one like I'm preaching about. He found a little woman. If men could have satisfied her need or her desire, that woman would have never wanted for anything else because she'd had man after man after man. Jesus told her, you've had five husbands and the one you now have is not even your husband. Amen. See, if that could have satisfied her, then she wouldn't have been empty when Jesus found her. She wouldn't have still been searching when Jesus found her. So let me tell you, the lust of the flesh, young people, is not where fulfillment is. Amen. The lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh is not going to satisfy your soul. I know I'm preaching contrary to the trends of this world. Turn the TV on. All you see is lootful, lustful, vulgar. Amen. Awful pictures uh, that you can look even in commercials. You can't hardly watch the news without somebody coming in with a hat naked woman or a half naked man advertising supposed to be good times good things uh, that never satisfies and never fulfills let me tell you something young man starting out in life and young lady you better watch who you keep company with young couples there's some young couples today they're trying to tell you it's in things uh, you've just got to have a certain kind of boat you've got to have a certain kind of, of camper you've got to have a certain type of living 
living facilities. You've got to have a certain type of automobile. And they're caught up so much until they're in hock up to here and don't know where the next payment's coming out of, uh, out from. And they're so miserable in their soul. And they're so unhappy until they fuss and quarrel from daylight to dark. What are you preaching? I am preaching. That's not where satisfaction is. That's not where fulfillment is. Oh, I heard a preacher say one time, if I had enough money, I believe I could be happy. If I just had enough money, well, let me tell you, that's not where it is either. And I'll tell you the reason why. I preached a revival. It was up in North Carolina, the church. And this had happened just a couple of weeks before I was there. A lady that's a member of that church, her own mom's, well, it was her sister's daughter was who it was. This lady's sister's daughter, her niece, had met this young man, had plenty of money and she already had a child of her own and she thought this is what I need and he played up to her and he allured her and he enticed her with the money and she grabbed for it and she thought this is what I need she hadn't been married to him but something like six months uh, until he began to beat her and abuse her and misuse her and then the, just two weeks before that revival this young man had went in and took a gun and blowed her brains out and that child also along with her but this young man's mom and dad had more money than he could burn more money than he could ever use up if that young man was satisfied with it why did it have to take somebody else's life there was an emptiness in that life and he tried to fill it with everything but Jesus and today we've let it creep into the church world help me preach Holy Ghost I said we've let it creep into the church world we try to appease everything with temporal means but God put a part of us that will say that's not cutting it that's not getting it for me I'm making dress up and look fine and go where I want to go but inside I'm dying I am dying because there's a longing that's not satisfied oh my I feel God here tonight I knew it wasn't going to be easy to preach this I'm looking for easy messages this week. I'm looking for something that'll talk to our hearts. Every last one of us. Amen. God is wanting you and I to wake up and shake ourselves. The devil's toying with you and I. I said he's toying with you and I. And he's trying to say, well, if I can get so preoccupied, if I can be so involved, work my eight hours on my job, when I get off, then I'll have me some recreation time. Then I'll go have family time. And family time until 12 o'clock, drop in the bed, don't tired, get up early, go back to work the next day, and on the routine goes. If I can just stay, stay so busy and so preoccupied that I fulfill or satisfy my life. Oh, but look at them. You can see the weariness in their faces. You can see the despair in their eyes. You can see the unhappiness in the way they talk with you in the conversation. If that's satisfying them, then why do they look like that? Oh, help us preach tonight, Holy Ghost. I tell you, that's not where it is. But I know where you can find it tonight. I know where there's a thirst quencher. And all of you that are here tonight, I believe you'll have to agree with me. It's where that little lady at that Jacob's well found it. It wasn't in the well of water. Jesus said, drink it and you'll thirst again. But if you let me give you this water, you'll drink and you'll never, you'll never thirst again. It'll feel that longing in your soul. Woo, hallelujah. I'm just going to stop right here and say if you have gotten a, a little dissatisfied with Jesus as your Savior you've got a little discontent with your experience with the Lord you better check up on it tonight I said you better check up on it tonight if he doesn't excite you but if it took a take for you to get excited about your salvation and winning souls I wish I'd have give you one a long time ago and if anybody else wants one if that's what it takes to get them excited brother I'll give it free of charge I'm telling you it's time we wake up and let the world know you don't have to die lost to go to hell there's a thirst quencher tonight and he's standing with a bountiful supply and he said whosoever is a thirst let him come and drink of the water of life freely don't lay there and die longing and needing satisfaction Woo! 
She didn't know what she was longing for, but she was in need. If I could sing and you wouldn't do this number on me, I'd sing a little bit of, I searched for him and I knew not what I searched for. <laughs> I long for him and I knew not what I longed for. Then I found Jesus and I knew that I would search no more. He filled that longing down in my soul. Woo, hallelujah. And I've not returned to the weak and the beggarly elements of this old world. I don't have to. I found satisfaction in Jesus Christ. Amen. I, can I preach a little bit? You won't, you won't think bad of me if I tell you how I search for satisfaction. Now I'm not telling you teenagers to try this. I heard Sister Holbrooks testify the other night. All she ever knew was a saved life. And oh, in my heart, uh, there was just such a yearning. I wished I could have lived like that and had that testimony. I wished I could stand before you like she did and say, I've never tasted sin and the dregs of sin like I did. I wished I could tell you that I never gave myself to the devil in temptation and that I was always saved and lived good and that's a fantastic wonderful testimony and young people if you'll listen to her and adhere to the pattern she's setting you'll spare yourself from pitfalls, heartaches and heartbreaks and devastation and destruction but I didn't I was searching everywhere else I didn't have godly parents like she did my dad was a drunkard bootlegger and a rail on mom I had a mother that claimed salvation that didn't leave it. I didn't have anything at home to help me. I live for God. But oh, I searched for that satisfaction. I long for that fulfillment. I went anywhere the devil led me to go. I drank whatever he set before me. I danced to the devil's tune. I played his games. And all the sadness. I can remember coming in from being late in the hours of the night coming in and going to my room and laying on that bed. Nobody around but me. And I'd lay there and I'd remember all that I've done and in the darkness of that night I would be ashamed of my life ashamed of what I did and how I acted and what I said but oh let me tell you I didn't have to live like that the rest of my life 19 year old girl sitting on a church pew in a little country church headed for a devil's hell searching for a Jesus hallelujah searching for a deliverer looking for a way out looking for a way out Jesus came by. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. I'm going to tell you, there's people in this house. I highly esteem. Pastor, I highly esteem you. And I have the utmost respect for you. Brother Davis, same here. Brother Williams, Brother Norman, all of you uh, ministers uh, of the gospel, I have utmost respect for you. And I just assume any one of you lay your hands on me and pray for me and believe for my help as I had anybody else in this world. But let me tell you something. We got people here tonight. You've been sitting on these pews waiting for me or somebody else to bring you out of your troubles. Uh, waiting for somebody else uh, to come with a magical touch. Uh, come with a magical word that'll wipe it all away but God's looking for somebody that's thirsty enough to get up and say show me Jesus will you take me to Jesus will you point me to the one that'll quench my thirst Woo, hallelujah oh if we could just get so and so singing group Come and sing for us in revival. Man, we could turn this town upside down. Oh, you think it's possible we could get that outstanding evangelist nationally known, worldwide known. Is there any way we could possibly book them to come preach us a revival? Is there any way that we could send out flyers and pack the house out? I know a poor old preacher. Oh, dear God, help me preached him a revival. He sat there and told us about a certain type preacher. And I won't tell you who it is because some of y'all might know the booger. said, we need a youth revival. And this particular type ministry is what we need. Forked out money to get that booger to come preach a free gospel. Let me tell you something. You start setting a price tag on your preaching, you just might as well hang your idea up. I said, you just might
somebody's well hanging up. God's not going to anoint somebody that merchandises a free gospel to a lost wall. He's looking for somebody that'll say, I got it free, and you can have it free. Woo! Hallelujah. Don't tell me they don't do it. I could name you some tonight that flip your wig. That told some preacher friends of mine, if you can guarantee me so much offering, I'll come preach your revival. He said, forget it. I said, hooray for you. But we're looking for somebody. Amen. Am I preaching right? Don't tell me I ain't preaching right. I done seen it too many times. <laughs> Church members, spirit get to moving. Oh, let me see. Let me see what Dale's doing over here. <laughs> Yeah, Brother Baltman, my, my, my. Look what he, look over here how she's acting. Well, look over, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, uh huh, I see it. Watch it, watch it. But they never get in. I said they never get in. They're watching because they're expecting somebody to do something wonderful and glorious. And all the while they're shriveling up and dying because they're so empty inside. They need this living water to drink deep and long from. You hear what I'm preaching tonight? I say it's not the preacher. It's not the singers. It's not a particular program. It's when we promote and lift up the thirst quencher. When we say it's Jesus. It's it's Jesus, it's Jesus, and oh, I love him so. It's Jesus, it's Jesus, I need him everywhere I go. Amen. She didn't need an uptown preacher come along, prophesying over, saying smooth sayings. She needed Jesus to deliver her. Hey, they told me about a time. Preacher went to a church. He didn't know nobody in the church. Didn't know anybody's life, you know, pastor or anything. And he was preaching revival. He said there was a certain lady in that church. And oh, to be super spiritual, he goes over and he prophesies. Sister, God's got his hand on you. He's going to use you. You're going to win many souls. Oh, she has a wholeness spell while he's prophesying. And he's just telling all these wonderful things. And oh, they just having themselves a hallelujah, seemingly good time. And then when church is over and he gets back to the parsonage, the preacher said, what in the name of heaven you mean prophesying or saying that to that woman? She shacked up with a man and ain't even married to it and God's not going to use nothing like that. God said adulterers will die and go to hell if they don't get right and clean up. Hello? Am I preaching right? What are you saying? I'm saying you better get your eyes off flesh and get it on Jesus Christ. You better quit seeking for a feeling or a certain manifestation and seek for a thirst. Quit and satisfying, fulfilling, move of God in your heart and your soul. That's where you're going to find peace of mind. Woo, hallelujah. I wish somebody else was preaching. I'd shout a little bit right here. If a shout would bring the peace, I've seen some never would know a day of trouble in their life. Because they can shout, 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 shout. And they're still so unhappy, you don't even want to say, how are you doing tonight, sister? Because they'll give you about a yard long of all their ailments and complaints. Hello? Am I preaching right? <laughs> Shouting won't bring the peace. That's just a blessing for that time. We need something that'll stay with us. When that old devil comes crawling around, peddling his wares all over again, things that you and I got delivered from, things that you and I lost the desire for when we drank from that water. You cannot keep a desire for this world while drinking out of that well of living water. You hear what I'm preaching tonight? I said it won't stay there. You can't mix them together. You're either going to want what satisfies or you're you're going to want a substitute that's like playing on a crutch, just trying to get by. I'm not trying to get by. I'm trying to live in a dying wall and go to a glory land that I've never seen, but I know it's waited. Woo, hallelujah. He said, if you drink, let me give you a drink. You'll never, never, never thirst again. Used to go to the VFWs on Saturday night. Anybody know what a VFW hall is? Rest of them don't know, just a few of you. Us old timers know, don't we? If you know what a VFW building is, wave at me. 
See, I knew there was more old fo older folks than just me and a few more here. Now you have to get some of these smart folks to tell you what that VFW stands for. But anyway, it's a building that they had down where I was from that they'd have Saturday night dances. They'd play their old love sick music, honky tonk music. Somebody sleeping with somebody else's wife and who shot JR and all them, you know, supposed to be exciting songs. And we'd grab us somebody and get out on the floor and dance to you. It's so silly. You don't even know where you are, who you are. Hey Amen. Them old drunk men breathing their own nasty breath on you, wanting to twirl you a couple of times. Hello, squeeze you. Don't tell me these things don't go on. Don't tell me. Listen, when he opened my eyes, I, I was enlightened to some things. I, the devil had the wool pulled over my eyes too. But since God enlightened my eyes, I, honey, let me tell you something. I saw the devil behind all of that facade. He was trying to give me a good time. I, I supposedly and all the while he was degraded, humiliating, amen, and trying to make merchandise out of something that God wanted to be pure and holy and consecrated and dedicated to his name. I dance on Saturday night till I just be dripping sweat. Yeah, we often like an old cabbage leaf, but didn't nobody make fun of me? While you're twirling on the floor, you go, yeah, and nobody made fun of you. Nobody, nobody looked at you like you're weird or peculiar. Am I right? Hello? Yeah. Nobody's saying that. And now I can get red faced, spit a little bit and sweat. And they say, dear God, look at that woman. Look at that preacher. Oh, that, that is so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed. I've seen him sit back there when he look at me. I embarrassed him so bad because I wouldn't be dignified. And because I'd get so red faced and sweat and spit on the first two rows. They thought, oh, how nasty. Hello, am I preaching the truth? Talk about, if I run a little bit, they say, that's fanaticism. If I jump a little bit, shake a leg. Amen. They said, that's silly. That's stupidity. Listen, if you had been where God brought me from and knew where I was going, I don't think you'd be ashamed to praise him any way he wanted me to or any way he wanted you to. Let me tell you something. He's been good to me. He satisfied a soul that I thought would never find satisfaction as I dealt deeper and deeper and deeper and dug deeper and deeper into the ways of the world. I came up more miserable. But when Jesus came by, 19 years of age, he said, Linda, I've cut it. I've had it all the time. Why look anywhere else? Why go any other place? I still satisfy. Get mad at me if you will I'm going to love you anyhow Like that old dog you kick He'll come back and lick your hand anyway sometimes Won't he? Amen hey Used to suck two packs of Winston cigarettes a day Oh I'm so nervous I can't do without them Sister Linda I've got to have them Hello First thing in the morning, give me my cigarette and cup of coffee. <laughs> Last thing at night, give me my cigarette. I got to have it. Oh, smoking two packs a day. <laughs> All the while playing, playing with my own health, toying with my own future. Honey, let me tell you something. You're taking a chance. It's like holding a stick of dynamite saying, well, I don't think it's going to go off in my hand. I like the excitement, the sparkle of the fuse gills when it's lit. Hello? Amen? Without even realizing it, people are sucking their health away and blowing it in the air. And so was I, but Jesus came by. And Jesus didn't say, I'm going to send you to hell if you don't lay them down and don't you buy another one. No, sir. He just said, come drink of my water. Come drink of my water. Come, I've got a drink for you. Come on, try this. But I smoke cigarettes. I don't care. Try this. Hello? Some of y'all wondering about that, aren't you? I ain't fit for, come on, try this water. If you'll take, see, he knew if he could ever get it in there. If he could ever get it in us. <laughs> Hallelujah. That it had a, a miracle work and supernatural work and power. That it would eliminate.
great things for you and I if he could just get us to drink it, get it down inside of us, amen? And when I picked it up and I started but I'm still battling it Sister Linda I'm not condemning you to hell for it I'm just preaching you a gospel message you need to go back to the well and drink another time you need to go back and get some more you just haven't drank enough and you just haven't drank long enough Woo, hallelujah used to love to tell old nasty jokes amen See, that's what the world, that's the way the world thinks. Y'all getting quiet. Y'all ain't going to think as highly of me when I tell you how bad it used to be. Right. I'm hoping it'll show you how miraculous God can take nothing and make something out of it. See, I tried to lay them down in a cutting, Brother Mathis, but when I got to drinking out of that well, <laughs> The tobacco company would be broke tonight, Brother Rogers, if they was waiting on me to buy another cigarette. Jesus, take it out. I said, Jesus, eliminated it. It, it quits my thirst, brother. It satisfied the longing, amen? Oh, he don't stop there. Tell me if I'm preaching right. You might have been out there too, buddy. I don't know. But then he don't stop the cigarettes, does it? Got to have something to drink with it. Yeah, you get thirsty. So the devil says, hey, drink something light. Just something light. One won't hurt you. My brother tried to tell me. He said, you can't become an alcoholic drinking beer. And I didn't know because I had never tried to become an alcoholic, so I didn't know. And, and so I'd just gotten saved, and I, dr I had drank some, but I had never drank to see if I could get to be an alcoholic from drinking beer. But one day I opened the newspaper, and there was a Dear Abby a column there, and I began to read it. And this guy had written in, he said, I just want to tell people that think you can't become an alcoholic drinking beer. They're sadly mistaken. He said, I started off with one or two beers a day. Then I got to a six-pack a day. Then two six-pack a day. And he told the quantity he had built up to. And he said, I became an alcoholic. I couldn't live without it. He said, when the beer didn't satisfy, I progressed to harder liquor and began to drink it and funnel it down. See, that's the way the devil does. He starts little, but he gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Amen. So I started drinking a little bit. And the devil said, this is where it's at because when you're under the influence of that alcohol, alcoholic beverage, you don't feel nothing. You don't think about nothing. All your emotions seemingly are nulled at that moment. But all oh, the night I laid in that bed and I was sick, I thought I'd, I'd spit my holy insides up. I said, God, if this is satisfaction, I don't want it. I just don't want this kind of satisfaction. And that curbed my appetite for that. But if I'd played into the devil's hand, I could be an alcoholic like other women are today. Like the young lady I preached about that got saved in the North Carolina revival. I could have been just like her. But Jesus came by just in time. I said, Jesus passed by with that drink. He said, get it in you, Linda. Get it in you. Whole church. We got to get it in us. You can't just pour it on. You can't just dribble it on. You got to get it on the inside. And the only way you get it on the inside is you have got to drink it for yourself. Can't pour it down, nobody, but we got to drink it. And it'll satisfy the longing. It quenched her thirst, did it? Did it, Sister Linda, did it really? The Bible said she left her water pots and ran back into the city of Samaria and said, come see a man that told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Is not this the one we've been looking for? Is he not the Messiah? And she went and ran and told them the good news. Yes, her thirst was quenched. But how about it, Sister Linda? After you get saved, do you really have to drink some more? David, a man after God's own heart, said in chapter 63 of Psalms and verses 1 and 2, he said, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and a thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory 
glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary David is saying I want more of what I've already had I'm longing for more of what I've already experienced I want to drink more of what I've already tasted of this is what I need more than anything else in this whole world when David took Bathsheba and sinned against God he wrote the 51st Psalm and he said oh God purge me and cleanse me and take not thy Holy Spirit from me David saw himself on the brink of losing contact with God and losing and having that sore severed from him he said I don't want it put me back in touch with God in heaven and let me drink and let me be restored and let me be revived you gotta go back to the well or the devil will drain you and empty you he's still the thirst quencher he's still the satisfier he said in John 7 37 in the last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst if any man thirst if any man long or yearn or desire he said let him come unto me let him come unto me. <laughs> Don't turn away. Come to him. He said, come unto me and drink and you can have it freely. What if you've been running for your life? And I feel like some of you have. Listen to me. I want to preach to you for a little bit on this. What if you've been running for your life? The devil's been hounding you. He's been on your trail. And you've just felt like he was there ready to lay claims on you any moment. You've tried to get away. And it looks like he's right there pawing at your heels. You're not wanting to give up and you're not wanting to give in. And you've run and you run and you run and you've gotten tired and weary and it looks like he's going to overtake you then do like the psalmist David he said as a heart panteth after the water brook so panteth my soul for thee oh God my soul thirsted for God the living God when shall I come and appear before my God he said I'm running to the water brooks I'm running to a source of help I'm running to a place of refreshment I'm running to a place of of renewal and I'm not going to just stop and sip I'm going to de delve into that water and I'm going to merge myself in that water and I'm going to let it get all over me and all that weariness is going to be left behind and all that frantic feeling is going to be left behind while I lay down in that living water of refreshment I don't know about you but I say lead me to the water brooks tonight the devil's been on my trail and I need a place of refreshment of quenching the thirst of my soul and he still got it he still got it running to the water brooks what about if you've been fighting the devil in personal combat and some of you have been doing that some of you have been fighting personal battles some of it's emotional some of it's mental. Some of it is just Satan's direct attack on you and your soul and your life. And you have fought long and you fought hard. You haven't given any, any area to the devil. You've stood your ground and you fought and you wouldn't relinquish any territory to him but you've held on. And now you're feeling tired and you're feeling worn. And you're feeling like I can't fight anymore. I'm so thirsty. Just like old brother Samson. After he took that jawbone, new jawbone of a donkey. And slew a thousand men. Samson was exhausted. Samson was feeling dry. Samson was feeling in need of refreshment. What happens? The thirst quencher. Says Clay. <coughs> a place in the hollow of the jaw. Kate clave a place there and Samson drank <clears throat> and what happened to him? His strength was restored and renewed. God put it right there in reach and range of him. All he had to do was drink. You know what we do? We fight and fight and fight and we feel like Samson did but then you know what we do? We sit down and begin to feel sorry for ourselves Instead of turning around and say, let me go back 
and drink from that well one more time. And that's all we need. That's all we need is just to turn back to the thirst quencher and drink some more. But oh, Sister Linda, how about if I'm fighting and I, and I can't get to the well or I'm struggling and I'm trying to find my way and I get lost and I, I don't have anything. I look and I don't see a well anywhere. I don't feel like God's anywhere to be found around me. If you'll take time to weep before the Lord and cry out of your heart and say, God, I'm in a distress and there's no one here to help me. There's no one here to aid me. There's no one here that can bring me through this. He will hear from heaven as it did for Hagar and Ishmael. As the water was spent in the bottle and she could not bear to see her son die, she put him under the bush and went a distance away. She wept and she cried and she sought for God to come. God heard Ishmael crying. The one that came from Abraham that he promised, I oh, will make a nation out of him. He heard him crying. And the angel spoke to Hagar and said, Hey, pick him up. Hold him in your arms. He's not going to die. God's promised to make a nation out of him. God's promised to raise descendants up from this young man. Hey, don't despair. Don't be ready to give up now. But oh, as she took him up, I believe the Lord wiped the scales from her eyes and she looked and there was a well of water. In that wilderness land, he put a well of water. And a place that she thought she'd never find any water, he put water right there within range and reach of her. We can sit down and die if we want to, but some of us are going to wake up and look and see, I've been sitting within reach of it. All I had to do was arise and go draw and drink from that well because God placed it right there for me. God put it right there for me. Go drink again for it. It quenches the thirst and satisfies the longing. I'm going to tell this as the sister comes to the piano. I went and preached a revival at a certain church. I won't say where. I went and preached a revival at a certain church. From the very first service, it was a struggle. I mean, it was a struggle. Every night it was a struggle. It was a battle. It seemed like you were just preaching and your words were falling right at your feet. We'd pray, Brother Waltman and I would go to the church. We were staying right beside the church. We'd go over to that church and we'd pray. We'd pray and we'd cry. We'd say, Lord, what's wrong? Is it me? Is it him? Are we not where we need to be with you? The reason we're not having a move of God like we need here. Lord, are we failing you in some area of our lives or displeasing to you in some way? Show us God. Show us what it is. Help us to see We'd be encouraged from praying. We'd get up, I'd study, and I'd feel like this is a message for the service. And we'd go to church. I was ready to preach and prepared in prayer and study was ready to preach. I'd struggle all the way through that service, get down to the altar service. I would pray with the ones that came, but no breakthrough. It was like you were praying, but nobody really felt a, a release or a help or an encouragement. I said, God, what is binding this thing? What is restraining us and seemed like we could not get an answer week uh, night after night it went like that but I'll never forget one night uh, uh, that day when we prayed I said dear God if nobody else wants it would you just please some way somehow just give me and brother Volkman some refreshment if that's what's wrong here if they just don't want it would you just give us something God if we're pleasing you and serving you the best that we can just give us us something because God to be honest with you I've just about gone with this thing as far as I can go at that particular night I didn't preach any extra special message there was no extra anointing it was a struggle the whole way through but when we got down to that altar service I, I've never been no more refreshed in all my life as the spirit of the Holy Ghost began to move in that altar service I, and it was just like God dug a well and I just reached over and began to try 
drink. I, I could care less who was praying who was. I began to drink and drink and drink. And God refreshing me that I wouldn't despair. I found myself in a spiritual wilderness. But I refused to lay down and die. I found myself running from the devil. And him hounding me with everything that he could. But God prepared a way for us. I'm telling you tonight. Don't you sit there and dry up on God. He's got a thirst quenching, satisfying power for you tonight. If nobody else wants it, you get it. If nobody else drinks it, you drink it. If nobody else cares about it, you reach out and pull it in and say, God, it's me. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. But it's me, oh God, standing in need of that drink. And I refuse to die. I refuse to give up. And I refuse to go back home like I came to this service. Because there's a drink that will satisfy my life. 